Hey guys, we here in Blueberry Hills. So here we are, it's July 10th, 2021. Uh, we're gonna continue framing. I thought I was kind of done, but I figured I'd get this knocked out too. Uh, it's pretty humid, it was raining all night, so it's, it's really hot. I haven't really started working, but I'm sweating pretty good. Um, anyway, I'm gonna do a bulkhead, which goes from the uh, center containers, which is the center roof system. Uh, the AC's gonna be up there. We're gonna be ducting, go through the bulkhead, and go out the front over the, over the kitchen area. So that's the whole idea. Even electrical is gonna run through there. So all the electrical goes to the kitchen and uh, to the fans and stuff to the uh, living room. On this side of the house, all runs through the bulkhead over the kitchen containers and down to their, their respective places. So we're gonna work on that. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. Um, another little thing I did, I modified the GoPro uh, mount. I have, it's just a GoPro camera, Bureau 9. Um, I'm using a case which had a very tiny hole for the microphone, so hopefully you'll, you're picking me up a little better now. Um, and the snap was actually hiding the hole, uh, which probably didn't help the sound. So we'll see how this works. Um, hopefully it's better the sound quality than the, uh, the prior videos. I used to have to uh, mic up the, uh, the, the input for uh, the, the camera sound. Hopefully you're reading me loud and clear now and uh, we have less problems. Uh, when I do the videos, I use a normal mic, uh, external mic, so that, that seems to work okay. It's a little, little metallic-y sounding for whatever reason, but in any case, hopefully the GoPro is better. Anyway, uh, let's start the framing and uh, that's all I gotta do today. See you in a minute. So here I am trying to do, start the dormer. Um, I decided to go all the way to the ceiling down to uh, just above the door area. Um, and that'll let us do all the AC ducting and uh, put all the, the wires for the kitchen and uh, some of the living room uh, in place. Um, it was kind of hard starting. I had to figure out uh, where, to, where to put stuff. Um, so you see a 2x4 and then I tried to uh, put a little extension on the bottom. I built it in phases. I didn't build it on the ground and put it up because it would have been a little more awkward um, since I'm higher up on the ladder and stuff. So here's me leveling stuff out. I put the, the beginning and the end of the dormer first, and then I, uh, le I level it out, of course. And then I uh, build the rest of the structure in place. It was quite warm, as you can tell. Um, sweaty as I am at the very end. <laughs> but anyway, uh, being on the ladder, um, this is just an eight-foot ladder, so I was on top of that measuring stuff out. Um, the pitch 212 I guess I could have done some math and figured out some sizes of the two bys but I just measured them uh, while I was building up the, the, the structure so the main hard part was just getting the uh, starting of the two by fours in the bottom of the dormer uh, in place and the rest basically just uh, went from the framing out towards the uh, the, the dormer um, so once we level everything out and I just measured up the uh, two bys coming down from the ceiling and uh, just snapped them in place so um, the hard part was getting the first first one in. <laughs> a little bit of help from Angie there. So I'm almost done building the main part of the structure. It's going to get extended another foot and a half. Uh, right right on the left side of the, above the door, uh, we, we see the uh, the top part of the, the header. Uh, that's going to be the access to the attic for all the uh, AC and the electrical. Um, the hole you see above uh, already, that's my access uh, hole, which I'll probably put a small door in. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna do anything special there. It's just gonna be ladders to, to get up there when we need to and that's about it uh, There's no mechanicals really going in there. Uh, it's just gonna be piping and stuff And we should be able to get everything up through that door uh, that hole So now I'm extending it out. This is pretty straightforward um, Once I got the uh, the main part in place. It was just adding more two buys and just nailing it up uh, pretty easy peasy um, and then uh, that was all I did for the framing last part of the framing I still have to do a small touch do on the fireplace, uh, which is coming this coming Monday, which is great. Wow, that was a lot of fun. I am sopping wet. It's super humid out. Don't know what the humidity is, but I'm mean, I don't know. I already had a couple. Of Quarts of water and a beer, yeah, Lone Star, whatever. Um, anyway, that's done. Um, that's just to have to hide the mechanicals, right? The wiring and the uh, the air conditioning ducting. And uh, I'm gonna have to make a uh, some kind of a small door to go into the attic over here because I just locked myself out. 
Um, and that hole over there on the right, that's actually what um, I crawl in there. That's the crawl space area. Let me tilt that up there and show you. There you go. So that hole up there is, is really for me to get into the attic. Um, I'll have a small door there eventually, but that's what it is. Now I'll cut out the, uh, the panel up there for the AC and so forth. So we'll make use of that. Uh, I'll put a little bigger door over here. Probably take out one of the, uh, make, make a header and so forth. And uh, I'm talking about that area over there where the dormer, dormer area is, right, right up here. And uh, that's going to be my access to the, the main part of the attic for the rest of the house. Um, on the left side of the house, at least. Um, I have access on top of this roof, the middle, the middle containers. I have to make a door to the game room attic because um, there's going to be air conditioning ducts and electrical stuff in there as well. Anyway, but that's about it. Appreciate you guys watching. So where we go from here, um, this coming week is electrical. I'll be probably doing all the, uh, the sockets and light switch placements. And uh, we're going to probably order the, the panel and all the breakers. And they're going to be basically the same as a shop. It's all, all new stuff. Um, pretty good quality. I'm, I'm going uh, above the normal residential codes. They, they're builder grade stuff. I'm not a big fan of that. It's, it's kind of cheapo. So I'm going a step a little step above it. It's a couple of bucks more, but it makes me feel better. Um, and mo most of the house is going to be 12, 12 three wire, uh, probably Romex kind of version. And uh, even though it's rated for 20 amps, uh, a lot of the house will be 15. Uh, kitchen area that's all going to be 20 amps. Every single outlet, every single light. Um, lights and fans are very low amps, so shouldn't be a problem. We're doing uh, mostly LED lights, probably all LED lights. So it's not going to be a real big draw on uh, any kind of amperage there. But still, I feel better about putting a little, little overkill on the wiring. So we never have an issue with overload or anything like that. Uh, pretty much three circuits per room. Um, maybe just two lights and then the sockets. If it's a small room, it's two. If it's a larger room, we're going to split the sockets up into two circuits. But that's minimal stuff. It's pretty straightforward. Anyway, more on that later. Thanks. We'll see you later. So before hanging up my hammer that day, um, I forgot to put a nailer for the uh, drywall for the ceiling in the garage. Uh, I'm going to have to do the other side as well, but there's too much junk in there at the trailer. Two buys and some steel stuff uh, that's in the way. I'm not going to bother with that, but I finished up this side. So now we have uh, something to nail the drywall, ceiling drywall to. Hey guys, Vita here at Blueberry Hill. So, a little side, uh, side effect here. Um, we're in the RV. This is the second time it happened. We had a uh, power go out. So last week it happened once, uh, right in the middle of the day. And uh, I basically went around, checked all the connectors and stuff, uh, reset the box or, or the breaker, and every time I reset it, it clicked. So I played with the connectors, loosened them up, plugged them back in, and everything seemed okay. Same thing happened this morning, and guess what we found? Yep, crazy ants all over the place. They're inside the connector. You can see the moisture build up here. Um, I have power turned off at the moment. I'm fixing all this stuff. I just redid the uh, connectors in there, looked in there. It looked good inside. But the last thing, you can see all the ants right in there. Um, this is San Marcos, so we're having crazy problems with crazy ants. Uh, we're using different kind of pesticides to kill them off, but uh, they always come back. So we'll probably have to get an exterminator at some point. But um, anyway, Figured it was something dumb like this, but here it is. So I'm fixing it up. I'm gonna clean them up and then uh, put some dielectric grease into the connectors and uh, hopefully that'll be good. Um, they're obviously getting in there. It's not a watertight seal per se. It's just a generic a Home Depot connector. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that, but I'll put the, I'll puke a whole bunch of dielectric grease on the inside of that. So uh, they shouldn't be able to get in there, but we'll see. Anyway, a little fun for, you know, Sunday morning. So hi guys, uh, so I'm going to continue with the fix. So I've got this uh, product here, use uh, on uh, electrical contacts, this is good for um, pretty much any kind of connectors you do outside. Um, it, it gets rid of moisture and it does a little protection thing on all the connectors. So um, I've used it in uh, sensitive equipment as well, um, kind of like uh, RJ, uh, RJ jacks, uh, RJ45, take all those ones. Um, works great, keeps moisture out and then uh, the circuit doesn't short if there's a little bit of water in there. Uh, this is supposed to leave a very small uh, protective layer on it. At the same time as electric safe, of course, uh, won't short nothing. 
and then I have the electric grease that I use for when you do outdoor coax or something you plug it in there and uh, I used to have a, a tube of that I can't find it so we're gonna use uh, a concocted version of it but I'll scrape the, the, uh, the electric grease out of a contact you shove underground for coax and other connectors and uh, I'll, I'll peep that up on the inside of the connector so we shouldn't have this problem again but we've had this for two years and this is the first time it's been a problem the ants are new obviously anyway I'm gonna do a time lapse to fix this thing and we'll see where we get from here sorry for the shaky video handheld all right so here's a, a poor video of me fixing the plug I took a uh, basically the, the plugs out cleaned them um, I'm putting the, the electric grease right there on the beginning of the plug. I, I ran out. I, I probably need a little more. I'm going to goop the bottom of that up so the, the ants can't get in through that area. Um, the plug has a little snap thing on it, so it, it tries to keep stuff out, but it's definitely not uh, moisture proof or, or bug uh, proof. Um, I've, one more thing, I have to rebuild the socket in the wall one more time because uh, the wires are so thick. When I shoved it back in there, uh, one of them disconnected, so I didn't have power on one of the leads. So. A little more work. This took about an hour, uh, an hour and a half, because it's uh, just hard access right here. Uh, the pipes in the way, etc. But anyway, that should do it. We have power in the RV, and uh, we're good to go again. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Catch you on the next uh, video. Uh, next video is going to be a little different. Uh, we're uh, popping some rounds off with some new guns we bought, and uh, just a little day off. See ya.